Heavenly Father, thank you for every single person here and the families that they represent. And thank you for the opportunity to, to work for a company that we can come together like this and uh, fellowship and uh, grow as individuals and then ultimately grow uh, as a team. Uh, thank you for every single person here and the contribution that they have with this company and help them to know uh, what an integral part they play uh, in, in their role um, with this company. Uh, bless this food to the nourishment of our bodies and help us to have an incredible rest of our week and weekend and be able to relax and get right back to it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good job. Yeah. Impressed with your vibe. What up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket, cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way, not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward, right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry, cause it's time for the daily bread. Owners of companies want to hide vacation and, and stuff like, because because their goal is for there to be enough money for them to take it, but but the people to hustle, right? We make them money, and my goal is for all of you to make enough money and have a be financially sound enough so that you can live your life, so that your quality of life goes up, right? Not just the quality of the business. But if you change and your quality of life goes up, it is a it is a predetermined thing that business will blow it out of the water. I, I, saw, say, I saw a picture yesterday of <laughs> this guy in a suit next to a Lamborghini and it had his, his employees said, Hey, you guys are gonna make it to the top. And then he said, Thanks. If you work really, really, really hard, then one day I'll have another. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the culture here. We believe that a raising tide at what? It raises all ships. I may be the CEO of this company. Nathan may be the what, CLO, CTO, whatever, chief, chief trainer, chief learning officer. I like chief learning officer because if you think you're teaching other people, you're not. You're learning yourself the whole time you're teaching someone else. So chief learning officer is a great name. But we may, be, we may have that title here, but you're the stinking CEO of your own life. Like, you gotta change you so that your life gets better. Because I can't change you. That's why we do the book reading thing. I can stick a book out here and we can all read it. But if you don't take the stuff and do it, guess what? <laughs> I'll keep changing and you won't. Well, Dave, you wanna give us an update on what all these fine people are a part of worldwide and locally? <laughs> After uh, uh, sitting for a while, I'm gonna... I'm going to just stand for a moment. Uh, I want to tell you something. Sometimes we don't realize what we're even involved in, the magnitude of it, the scope of it. And, uh, but I want you to know that uh, <clears throat> the checks we receive from this company, we put them immediately to work. Let me give you an example. Uh, in 2017, uh, we're involved in feeding centers in Nicaragua, 21 feeding centers. We're involved in uh, Jonesville, South Carolina with 7,000 people per month receiving uh, food. We're in Bavard, North Carolina. We have about 700 a month receiving food. This is an abundant amount of food. We have tractor trailer rigs bringing it in. Uh, we have cut a deal with uh, CBS. We get all of their uh, shelving items that maybe still have six more months of life in them, they rake them off in large boxes, we get it. And of course, everything we do is free uh, to the public who comes for help. Uh, I was just recently in Cuba, my first trip into Cuba, and uh, we are uh, now partnershiping with uh, Pastor Onet. Uh, he has about 15 house churches. He has uh, one major church. No church has been built in Cuba since 1960. 
uh, because of communism. But uh, we are now in the process. We've just sent the money down to help uh, what was a house church is going to be converted into a house for the preacher. And if you step out his back door, it's about a half of a football field. We're getting ready to construct a pavilion, is what you call it, uh, instead of a church. It has to be open air, which we do in Nicaragua a lot before they become a, a full, uh, you know, built church. We're also involved already in their feeding program. Every week, there are about 75 families they take care of uh, that are out in just, it's like wilderness. And, uh, I mean, they're just poor as dirt, and there's no way they're going to make it except they get help. So we told him we'll partnership with him on that. In October, we hope to see the pavilion go up. Um, I'm also involved in prison ministry. I've, I've ministered in prisons in Nicaragua, South Africa. Uh, we're now in prisons every month in the state of North Carolina. We're getting ready to go into Raleigh and that, that, that area. We're in Boone, North Carolina in the jail systems there. We're in Morganton, North Carolina, the jail systems there. We're in Spartanburg jail systems there. And, um, I thought Spartanburg was a jail. It is. I feel like I'm locked up in Spartanburg a lot of times, so I can't get out. But, just, you know, I'm just trying to give you an overall uh, view of, of, of what you're in, involved in. I, I've, been, uh, I've been in ministry 36 years. And uh, I, I was a health club guy, ownership. I, was, uh, I owned 18 restaurants at one time, part owner. Um, but what happened to me was I had an encounter with the invisible God. He forever changed my life. I was a 10-year alcoholic and uh, married my high school sweetheart hoping that, that maybe that would change me, but it didn't. I grew worse. And we thought, well, maybe we'll have a baby and that, and that would help me not be as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde as I was, but I grew worse. In 1975, I hate to say this to you, but I actually took a gun and was going to take my life. I had hurt so many people, destroyed so many homes, brought shame and disgrace to my mom and my daddy. For one who had ex excelled in sports and was a two-time most valuable player as a high school quarterback, batting crown champion in the ninth and 10th grade. I made the all-star team every year in baseball. And then they end up, I, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I, I made wrong decisions, okay? And I remember one day, Joseph, I got up and I was so, I was so down that I made my way to a liquor store and I had 65 pennies in my hand. That's how low I went. And 65 pennies would buy me a pint of hi-fi wine. That's how low I went. But one man changed everything. One man took the old football picture, placed it on a secondary bedroom wall, and fasted and prayed 30 days over my wicked soul. He invited me to church on September 6, 1975, at about 10 o'clock in the evening, and I agreed to go. I went on September 7th, 1975, to a little old Mill Hill where I grew up, Spartanburg Mill Hill. And that day was the day that the chains that were on me, the chains and the shackles of destruction were broke off of me. And I came to know Christ as my personal Savior. It's hard to believe what happened that day, but as I was sobbing like a baby, uh, I remember a voice crying over here to the right side, and it said, Excuse me? And I looked over, and it was my two brothers. Both of them were alcoholics. And they came and fell on their knees and said, God, we need help. Both of them received the Lord. And then there was a voice on the left side that said, Excuse me? And my two sisters were in church that day and came and fell on their knees and Sue and Kay and invited. They were both alcoholics. We all had drinking problems. I don't throw no stones at anybody. I wish I could take a drink. I, I, I love beer, but I just can't do it because if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll be long gone. I just can't do it. But I don't throw no rocks at anybody that does. I don't, it's, it's okay. Then the greatest prize I could ever have, Joseph, was because of my daddy and 
the influence that my father had on me. On that day, September 7, 1975, I, there was a man on the back row that stepped out and said, hold it, and he came jogging because he was a fighter. And he came running to the front, and he said, if Jesus is good enough for my kids, he's good enough for me. And my father fell to his knees and invited Christ in his life. So my family actually was made complete. What I do, I want you to understand something. What I do and what y'all do for me, what I do, I take very seriously. Very seriously. I am at it continuously. I, I, many would call me a radical at what I do, but I, I, I do it with a sense of urgency and I, I do it with a sense of passion and compassion because I, I, I believe that God's going to hold me for every dollar that comes through our ministry to do the business of the King, and that's what I do. And I really appreciate y'all. <laughs> I really do. I, I can't, I mean, I really, I can't thank you enough. And he knows how much I love him. And it ain't got nothing to do with money. It has nothing. I knew him and loved him when he didn't have money. <laughs> this man here has always been special to me because I saw something in him. Yeah, he's tough, but he's also compassionate too. And I love his dear wife and I love his children. And I love this guy. I'm telling you right now, he's very special. Nathan's extremely special to my life. So, uh, Jeff is very special. I've only just begun to know Tyler in, in a way by watching all these creative things on social media and all. But listen to me. Oh, no. Ty Tyler's more special than all of us. Well, I don't know. They got y'all running through woods now and screaming out and hollering. And we got one over here going into water at midnight and freezing cold water in the middle of the wintertime. Uh, we got a lot of stuff going on, but I want you to know that uh, we're, we're busy about the Father's business, and, and uh, anyway, love you guys and appreciate everything you do for the, for the ministry. Thank you.